For some, buying a new house or apartment doesn't quite fit into their budget. So naturally, the next option is renting. Today, we take a look at what rights you have as a potential tenant and how this process works. We have two property experts with us in the loft to discuss everything there is to know when it comes to renting. Simon Bray, CEO and of Private Property, as well as Just Property Group's director and CEO, Paul Stevens. Gents, a warm welcome to the loft. Good to have you back, Simon. Great to be back, you know, and so, talking about something with quite a lot of gravity to it. Absolutely. So where exactly is the renting market like at the moment? What is private property seeing? Uh, the renting market is just as hot as it's ever been in South Africa. I mean, uh, we see a lot of the market on private property. Uh, we see the listings coming on every day. We've mm -hmm. seen hundreds more uh, rental properties coming onto the platform in the last few months. Yeah. And I think it's just uh, the market shifting slightly. You know, a lot of the first world markets around the world are, are rental first. Mm. And, and uh, certainly the property market in South Africa has been a buy first market. Yeah. But uh, issues around affordability, issues around, uh, you know, how safe is my property investment these days mm -hmm. uh, are convincing people that, that renting is perhaps a better option. Yeah. So it's really, really hot right now. I mean, what we like to say is there are 50 tenants for every landlord on private property right oh, now. It's just wow. an unbelievable demand. And like you said, renting is all about the idea of affordability. Um, sort of what are some of the benefits of renting over buying? Well, obvious benefits are things like flexibility and affordability. Mm -hmm. You know, we still have a market where it's much cheaper to rent in the areas you want to live than buy. Uh, mm -hmm. So if you have budget constraints of any kind, it obviously makes sense to look mm -hmm. at renting. Exactly. Obviously, you're not building up that long-term asset because you're paying somebody else uh, over a period of time, but it is still much more affordable to rent. And yeah. then th there is this concept of flexibility. Mm. You know, our lives are shifting so quickly these days. This concept of stability that, that people had maybe 10, 20 years ago yeah. is not nearly the same. You know, you might pick up and move, uh, you know, might get in a new relationship, <laughs> uh, new job, whatever the case might be. And, and so the flexibility of, of being sure. able to up and leave uh, within a couple of months is a great Absolutely. thing. Something I've noticed, particularly in our country in South Africa, and it's a beautiful nation, I think one of the things is that the law sometimes seems to feel a little bit distant to the average person. And I'm sure when it comes to renting or buying, the legalities around that tend to be quite blurry and people don't really know what their rights and responsibilities are. Do you have any comments on that? Yeah, well, I think, I think the truth is the law is pretty straightforward. It's pretty simple, yeah. but uh, a lot of people just don't know what their rights are. And we've got an advice platform that, that deals with all sorts of questions and all sorts of queries. And the most searched for issues are around rentals. What sure. deposit should I pay? Uh, what should my lease agreement say? Uh, what do I do if a tenant doesn't pay? You know, like, mm. is there an eviction process that I, I should be aware of? Mm. And people are desperately searching for that kind of information. Yes. And, uh, and I think it is because it's a murky world. You, Absolutely. Know? you go from one landlord to the next and, and sometimes you treat it differently and you don't know exactly what you're and prices are. across areas vary so differently that you never really know what's the right value for a specific area. And so it's exciting to have you in the loft with us today. Tell us more about the idea of, of, of renting and the legalities around that. What should we look for when it comes to starting to rent something? I think the most important thing with tenants to try and assess before mm. you rent a property is do you have an impaired credit history? Mm. Um, we are finding in the market at the moment that close to 50% of tenants that are applying for a place aren't qualifying just simply due to their impaired credit history. Sure. So generally people are going to know that they've got an yeah. impaired credit history, so they need to go and deal with that. Mm. Go and see an attorney and, and get it sorted out. It's not difficult. Make sure you get it behind you, because whether you're renting or buying a property, mm. this is going to hold you back. So sort that out first and foremost. Once that's sorted out, you can start tackling the yeah, simple things. Issues. Like what is the most important, you mentioned mm. it earlier, Simon, is affordability. Mm. You've got to ensure that you can afford a place. Don't take a place that you can't afford. And very often people will approach a rental agency dreaming of living in Camps Bay, but they can afford to live in City Bowl. Yeah. So it's a, actually a very simple mathematical equation that we use as rental agencies, where basically you take your net income um, after taxes, and 30% of that can be used as a general term towards your rental. Mm -hmm. So as a simple sum, 10,000 Rand, you can, as a net amount, you can afford a 3,000 Rand rental. Very simple, but use a professional agency. Yeah. Um, let them advise you. And most importantly, I know it came up earlier in our conversation, is location. Yeah. Um, 
and that's a very simple assessment. You want to live close to schools if you've got children. You want to live close proximity to a transport route if you don't have transport. I think those are really lifestyle questions, but the mm. big one that people come up with is the legalities around it. I think that lease arrives uh, in your email inbox to have a look through and it says, approve this lease, sign it, and, and we never really know what to look for, I think. Mm. What are some of the things we should be focusing on when we receive that lease for the first time? How does that process work? Do I have a say? Do I have rights? Are they basics that should be in every lease? Absolutely. I think first and foremost, and, and that's where a little stumbling block comes with a lot of tenants that rent from a private landlord. Ensure, it, and it's not legal that it has to be in writing, a lease agreement can be a verbal agreement, but ensure yeah. that it's in writing. If things are verbally discussed, even if it's a parking bay or something about the alarm, mm. if you've negotiated this, ensure it's down in the terms and conditions, even if it's special mm. conditions later, because issues do arise, and they often arise at a later point mm. where everyone's forgotten what they'd negotiated or discussed earlier. Yeah. So first and foremost, make sure it's in writing. And then there's okay. simple conditions like the rental amount. Is that all I'm due to pay, or are there, are there other amounts mm. that I have to pay? Do yeah. I have to pay for the alarm? Do I have to pay levies? Do I have to pay the rates and taxes? Mm. Generally, a lot of those costs are associated with the landlord. So know your rights, and a lot of this is available online. You can mm. go and, as Simon said, not just on private property, you can go and Google Rental Housing Act, and very clearly there it stipulates mm. what needs to be, who's... What the basics of a lease contract is. Yeah, who's mm. rights. So ensure you're not being hoodwinked with costs, because very often there are also, when, even when dealing with a reputable rental agency such as ourselves, you need to ensure that you're well aware of what costs come, yeah. particularly when things don't go right and you're wanting to move, you're getting transferred now, it is becoming a small world, so next month you transfer to another country, you need to give uh, notice. notice. There are penalty clauses, so make sure you understand it. And with mm. the CPA, which is a new law that was passed a few years ago, a lease agreement needs to be clear and understood. Mm. And even yeah. though it is, your layperson very often can't understand the things. Yeah. So ask and understand before you land yourself in trouble. I think that's the key, is ultimately it's a contractual relationship between two parties. So the landlord and tenant are saying, this is the framework that we're going to govern our relationship based on. So mm. you absolutely have the rights to negotiate things up front. Uh, do you want additional security before you move in? Uh, do you want an air con and there's not yet an air con provided? It's not the type of thing you really want to wrangle with months down the line. Mm. You actually want to deal with that at the beginning. How's it going to get paid for? When's it going to get installed? Exactly. Just put it in the lease. Exactly. And what's nice about your two platforms is that you do have an option to go and find this information out. You are not left in the dark. You can go and find out. So use the resources that are available to you. I think the single biggest thing I'd like to point out at this stage of, of what we see almost 90 5% of the issues that arise is around a deposit. Mm. A deposit is a huge thing for your average tenant. He's often having to place a deposit and the first month's rental while his deposit is still locked up with another agency. Mm. Then the tenancy ends and there's always a dispute around what amount do I get paid back. And if they understand very clearly from the onset what they need to do, so they've got to bring the property back to the condition mm. that it was, taking fair wear and tear into account. And I think that always leads to miscommunication, yeah. where they don't understand, well, why don't they just do it themselves, clean the carpets? You know, as soon as the agency is put in place, or the landlord, to paint the place, to clean the carpets, and then the tenant wants to argue about, well, I've been overcharged here. Exactly. So I think, again, it comes back to understanding yeah. what you can do and what you can't. And you've seen it all, so people must use this resource that's available to them. So make sure that you guys know all the nuances. You've seen every sort of action take place. So make sure you guys go and find the right resources online. So, Jens, absolutely eye-opening. Thank you so much for this chat. Hopefully we have shed some light on the topic of renting so that you can make a more informed decision. Remember, you have your rights as a tenant, but also you have responsibilities. So make sure that you read your contract well and know what is expected from both yourself and your landlord.